Hi and welcome to Tech Chronicle. It's a little bit of a different episode. I'm not going to bother with the usual intro video or anything. I'm just going to do this as a, a quick as I can sort of short video. Uh, basically, a friend of mine who's a teacher gave me this, what they call a ripple tank, that they got for their school. And basically, it's for investigating waves, investigating wave behavior. And one of the things they need to do is to be able to calculate wave speed. Now, wave speed is equal to the frequency of the wave, so how many waves there are per second and the wavelength of the wave multiply those two things sorry it's not the camera multiply those two things together and you get the wave speed and quite often when I, when I was at school which is quite a while back um, we use much bigger ripple tanks than what we've got here which is quite a small portable one uh, and they still make those sort of bigger ones they are a bit awkward and not easy to use but you, you can count the frequency on them if it's a low enough frequency you know you'll count the waves going past a certain point over say 10 seconds and get an average and divide by 10 and find out your frequency but these are one of the reasons that he told me they got this is they're incredibly uh, convenient and portable you can count around and, and basically i've got to make waves so they've got like a projection screen on top and if i just turn that like that so the waves will be projected onto the top here uh, and if we open it up there's a little small area where the actual, I will put the camera up and have a look in a bit, there's a small area where the water goes, which I'll put some in. So we'll just put a bit of water into there, let's see if everything looks like it's level. Just, I don't think my table's very level to be fair, so I don't know how well this is going to work. Just to sort of fill it, yeah, my table is not very level at all, but there we go. And... Basically, we've got a paddle which will go up and down, it making waves. Uh, and if we switch it on, you can probably, yeah, it's definitely, I think I'm actually on, I think it's actually sitting on one of my wires here as well, which I'm trying not to spill the water here. I'll just level it out a bit, that's better. If I switch it on, you can maybe hear it vibrating. I can feel that, but you probably can't see it. And if I bring the camera in, you won't be able to see the waves either. So, what you had to do in the old days with the old ripple tanks, you had to have, have a light as well, but let's just close that up. So when I was at school, and if we turn a light on, we can see now there is some camera effect because this light is strobing. It's a strobe light. If you look, it actually says, we can see it there, it actually says strobe light. And the idea is it flashes in, synchronis in synch synchronicity to the wave, so the waves are actually moving forward, you can probably see that a little bit on there, moving forward at quite a reasonable speed, but by strobing the light, the frequency of the waves, you'll get them to look like they're standing still, so we can do that, can adjust the strobe, which is all I'm doing down there, just adjusting the strobe speed, and so we can get them synced perfectly. However, it also has a handy feature this, in that you can actually press the button right down, and it will automatically sync the light to the waves, the vibrations. So we're still getting the, the, the artifact of the shadow going down. Believe me, that shadow that we're seeing there, you don't see in real life. Um, so if I turn, the waves are now stationary, you can definitely see that. Um, if I turn the frequency up, which is done by this control here, you can see the waves, the light keeps in sync with the waves, and then the wavelength, as the frequency goes up, the wavelength's gonna go down. And you can see, and the idea is the um, children have been told are, are supposed to calculate wave speed from this, given the fact that they could measure the wavelength with a ruler on top of this screen, and they would need to know the frequency. And there goes the problem. There is no indication of what frequency, there's no display or anything on this machine. So this friend of mine asked me if I could actually do something to actually get the frequency out of here. And at first I thought, well, okay, maybe open it up, get a tap into the wires for the strobe or for the motor or something like that and read the pulse off it. And then I just thought of something, well, we've got a pulsing light here. And look at my parts bin. I've got uh, several of these little, these little, um, just take it away from that, from that bright camera light, and we get some uh, different exposure on this. Uh, solar cells, which are responsive to light. So I figured if that's strobing, this will give a different voltage. Although, we can't, although it looks like it's a constant light now to us, because our eyes will not see it as a strobing light, this should be pulsing a different voltage depending on whether this light is on or off. So I've got the score pack, and that's what we'll, we'll quickly investigate now. I've got, I've got this, I, I have already done this, but I'll just do it again for the benefit. Uh, of the video, I got the straw back and I connected up the. Oh, we've knocked the waves all over. 
I connected up the um, scope to it, so I'll just do that again. And hook that up. I'll just keep it pressed. Oh, I don't need to keep it pressed on, it's going to sit there quite nicely. And you can see that we've got a really quite reasonable square wave for the output of that saw cell. So the, the strobe light is really on and off in a very, very clean cut, well, fairly clean cut way. So if I turn the, turn the frequency down, it says the frequency there is 60.2 hertz. At the bottom, you won't be able to read that. We've got a little display here, it's telling me it's 60.2. But you will be able to see, and I'm going to turn it down, that's gone down to 53. And you might be able to see the different side of the picture of the vibrating motor on there as well. So you can see that the wavelength is increasing as the frequency goes down. Down to 28.6 hertz. And again, we'll turn it up. You can probably, if I keep quiet, you'll probably be able to hear it as well, the frequency from the vibration. That's about 300 hertz ish. Maxing out at about 454 hertz. So great, we've got a really clean pulse. With such a clean pulse, we should be able to hook it up to an Arduino um, on the analog to digital converter port, one of the uh, ones it's got, and sense when it's going up on a rising edge uh, and when it's coming down and when it's going up again. So then we can actually work out when it's been a complete wave, work out the time that took, and display a frequency. Which is basically what I've actually already built on a, a little prototype board here. So I built this little prototype board, which consists just of the Arduino and a little um, 128 by 32 OLED. So if I put this back on where that was, let's take that off. So one of the ways I check this as well, because I've written the code for it, which I'll, I'll show later. Um, I'm not going to put this on my website like I usually do, I usually show you a link to my website. I'm not going to write this up, it's just a quick bit of code. This, this took me about half an hour to completely do in code, it was relatively simple. So if I connect that up to ground, and I haven't got my magnifying glass just handy, I can see there's a ground there, but I can't tap him because that one's already there. There should be another one somewhere, I can just spot it. There it is, there's a ground there, so I'll put that in there. And I think it was A0 I tapped into, so that says A1... Where's A0? I will just get my magnifying glass, it's just handy. Let's have a quick look. And A0 is right down towards the bottom end here. So I'll just pop that in. So what I did, I, just, I basically pop, I pop that in, and that's how this circuit works. I will just alter my camera angle a little bit, so we've got that in. And I'll pop that on. Uh, I think it's that way up for the display. And originally, obviously, I wired this onto the computer and everything, but for ease, just one second, I'll just go and get it. Also, the final unit I'm making for my friend um, needs to be portable. They don't want to hook it up to a computer or even just another power supply. So, they, they, you shouldn't really, for various reasons, use 9 volt batteries to power Arduinos because you, you're really wasting energy. Um, but on this nano I'm using, it needs really around about a minimum voltage of 7 volts on the VIN, the VIN voltage in, to work correctly, to step that down to 5 volts on the main board. Uh, but the problem with doing that, this is a 9 volt battery, you're wasting like, you know, 4 volts of energy, which is basically given off as heat. And the capacity of these won't last long, but however, in this situation, the ease um, for my friend, for the school, for the, the, the teachers that will be using this, just connect up a 9 volt battery and they don't want to switch it on for a few minutes at a time, uh, maybe three times, three or four times a year, um, that's going to be fine. It's an easy solution for them. So I'm going to build this onto a local board and it will take a 9 volt battery. So I'm just going to power it up. It's all programmed, so we'll, we'll just uh, plug that in the right way. And there we go. I'll just put that there. I'm um, reading off on that. I don't know if you can see that there. Of 80 hertz. So I'll turn it right down. If you remember, it was about, oh, was it 28? 28 point something or 29 point something hertz, the lowest level. So I'll turn that down again. Yeah, it was 29, was it? 29 point or 28 point six something. So yeah, and I, when I did this, obviously I had the scope hooked up still to these wires, so I could make sure that everything was uh, reading the same as what the scope did. Because obviously the scope, I definitely trust the, re the readout on that. Um, and yeah, and I, and I ramped it right up. So I'm going to turn it up, you'll be able to hear it turning up, and you'll see the frequency on the display go up. 
and a weird altar as well. Oh, 50 hertz. I can turn down, you can get it bang on 50 hertz, right? Too much of a problem. There we go. And we can ramp it up. And I say all this is done by just basically Arduino sensing the change in voltage coming off the actual solar cell. Which obviously when I measured it, I made sure the, um, I mean I know the rough limits of a solar cell voltage, but this one from full brightness was about one and a half, 1.4 volts. Um, minimum it was coming out with was by 0.4 of a volt, something like that. So well within the acceptable voltage range, it's not going to go really any higher than that at all. Solar cells don't anyway. Uh, I'm going to turn that up. And if you remember, we, we, on the um, oscilloscope, I think it was about 454, 460, something like that, it was, it was uh, topping out at, and there we go, perfect result. So the Arduino is doing this really quite accurately. Um, I'll show you the code in a bit, uh, but that's it, that was the finished project, and I've knocked that up in about 20 minutes, uh, including the code in 20 minutes, half an hour, something like that. Um, very easy to do, just from, and this is what I said, I built a little unit, uh, just from a little solar cell. Measuring its change in voltage because this light is strobing on and off very fast, which we can't see, um, but which that can obviously pick up quite easily. So, yeah, that will work nicely. So, now for those teachers with this unit, when they want to calculate wave speed and doing that with the class, they can see the frequency, which in the old days, yeah, you'd have to literally count waves and move it along and have quite a low frequency, much lower than 28 hertz, to be able to count waves going past in a second. Um, and you can measure the wavelength with the ruler just literally on the display and then you can calculate the speed of what these waves are going at and see how that speed changes as we alter the frequency if it does maybe that's something for somebody to look up does this change the frequency of a wave does it change the speed that it travels at answers down below perhaps okay so what i'm going to do now i'm going to cut to a montage based me doing the build for the board for this and as again i know please don't comment about using an battery to power these I am using it for the reasons that I said, and that's the way it's going to stay. It's going to stick with a 9 volt battery. Okay, you get some Veriboard, and I put the solar cell on. I marked around it roughly to uh, get the size of the board I'm going to work with. I then score the board to size. Try not to slice my fingers. and just snap it and then that can become a template for the second one I'm just going to use my Dremel just to tidy it up a little bit make sure it's not too sharp on the edges I'm just going to cut off the um, header pins for programming the Arduino here as they they protrude quite highly, and we won't need them again. I'll just roughly lay components out on the board to see where they're going to fit and where everything seems to work together. And it was at this point I realised it wasn't really going to work together, so I ended up cutting cut, cut some much bigger board. So with my new bigger board and my Arduino placed on it, I just solder up the pins that I actually need to solder for this project and leave the others unsoldered. Not forgetting to actually break the tracks, because uh, this is actually a uh, strip board, so I need to break the tracks between the pins of the Arduino, otherwise they'll short out together with a little handy tool that's made just for doing that on strip board. And we'll drill the hole for the on off switch. And then we have to fit the spacers in between the two boards to keep everything nice and tidy and together and square. Just fasten it up. And there we go, one completed board. Just need to hot glue it to keep all the wires from being pulled out of place so they don't come off the solder joints. Uh, making sure everything's just going to stay as it should be. So here's the code, the uh, first couple of lines are just in library files that we were driving the OLED. We then have some uh, constants, 
We then have some constants, for actually judging where the rising edge is of the waveform. Variables, actually store the last time this time to work out how much time has passed between waveforms to help us calculate the frequency. We actually calculate the frequency as a, a sequence of readings. Deck. A sequence of readings, I think I've got it set to about 20 or something like that. Yeah, the number of results average there is 20. And then it displays the results to give a much more accurate result. We then in the setup, just set up the actual OLED again there. We take an initial reading. We clear the display and we print the text waiting. Then go into the main loop, but before I discuss that, I'll just scroll down to the bottom, because in the main loop, we do display the result, and the routine displays it is just there, which is just uh, standard OLED driver uh, uh, routines, that's the display text on the display, so I won't go into any detail there. But in the main loop, we wait for a rise at an edge, so when it's, if it's below this rising edge limit, we do nothing, we keep going round and round, when it goes above, then we won't necessarily say it's a rising edge because it could be when we switched on it was above that limit anyway so it but it could have been coming down but still above that limit so if it's above that limit then we allow it to move on to this bit and then we say actually is it now actually go higher than that does it actually is that plus that to confirm the rising edge so we get a rising edge confirmed once we've got a rising edge confirmed we'll record the time and we'll do a bit of a calculation on the frequency and we'll add it to the average, just in this res results here. Uh, sorry, we'll add it to the average there. And then if we've done the number of values we want to average, we'll display it. And initially that could be quite erroneous, but it's a fraction of a second. Then we wait for a dropping edge. We confirm the dropping edge. And then the whole routine starts again. So the very first run through this, we may have an enormous result, but it is literally thousands of a second of a wrong result which you never see it'll quickly settle down within the second reading uh, to be able to find rising edges calculate the frequency and then the falling edge and that is basically it there is nothing else to it a relatively simple piece of code this is not the one i knocked up in 20 minutes that was just i, I put in the value to the zero port for a quick check this probably took me a little bit longer so we've got our rather how you doing built unit but it, it does the job um, it should be fine. Uh, now I've got battery in there. So let's switch it on. You see it says waiting. And switch the ripple tank on. We switch the waves on. So waves are on. You should be able to hear that. And we'll switch on the uh, strobe. There we go. 27 hertz. So it's obviously set right at the bottom of the Vibration, yeah, I'm trying to turn the wave nozzle, uh, wave control. So we turn it up, it should increase. Up to the maximum it does of 460. And down again. So as I said, with, with this unit, you can do experiments into refraction, reflection, diffraction, but also one of the requirements that they want to do is to be able to measure the speed of the waves that are going across the water waves that are traveling from there to there that speed needs to be calculated and the only way we can do that with this unit is to know the wavelength which you can measure off the screen you may notice there's no waves at the moment that's because there's no water in the unit at the moment so we need to actually measure the wavelength we can do physical with a ruler and to know the frequency how fast those waves sorry not how fast how many of those waves are going past the point in a given time which we can get by how fast that is vibrating how fast the strobe light is vibrating because they are identical in this unit the strobe is on and off exactly the frequency of the waves travel down there in order to sync with it so you could actually see them as a standing wave so that ends this episode it's a little bit different i suppose um like and subscribe if you like what i did and i'll see you next time